seems legit. Hello my legitimates, welcome back again. Today I have decided to make the everyday tote with the decal I got from the Timu haul. Uh, I think this bag looks epic. So this is the front, I have riveted the handle on and we've done like cool sneaky handles. So the underneath has a black accent just for something completely different. And then on the back, this fabric is from Spotlight and I just think it matches perfectly. Couldn't have picked a better fabric if I tried. Um, I went with yellow because my pink was the wrong shade of pink to match the fabric and so was the blue. So I was like, yellow is cool, yellow looks amazing and it's got a lot of it going on. Um, so we've done the zipper in the top and then I just did a single Tory pocket on the inside. So it's just like a little pocket just to help keep yourself organized. Um, and even though I have used a rainbow zipper tape, I actually went with gunmetal hardware everywhere. I know some people are a bit scared to kind of mix them, but I think this come out really nicely with the gunmetal and just rainbow zipper. The rainbow zipper really picks up the colors in this and the gunmetal makes it a little bit more kind of funky and cool girl. Uh, and we've got bag feet, obviously. So if you want to see how I've made this, please stay tuned. All right, so I don't know why I always do this. It's actually really fun. You should try it, although it might become like a tick, like it has for me. Anyway, uh, so I have ironed my decal from the Timu website onto my vinyl. This is fabulous. If you are one of my members, there's a video on how to do this. Uh, for those of you who are not a member, I will eventually release it to everybody. Uh, but it's perks of supporting me in my cause. So, we are going to grab all of this. I'm going to grab all of them, just so that I know which one's which. So the idea is, is that we're making a square. So that one will go there like that. And I picked yellow because, I mean, I could have picked any colour. You can't really see that where that is. I could have picked any colour, but I just I decided yellow was going to be awesome. We are also using a rainbow thread. So I'm going to put these right sides together. There to there. And then we're going to tuck it under. Oops, we're not going to tuck it because it moved. So if that's the case, we are going to instead put clips on it so it can't move. Now because this is an angle, it will actually overlap a little bit. Uh, so the yellow piece is going to look bigger. The idea is, is that it needs to line up at the half inch here, right? So from this side, see how it kind of sticks over each side just a little bit? That is okay and normal. So I am going to stitch at, uh, with a two and a half stitch length. Now, oh, I don't have it anymore. I've got to get my little magnet thing again. I've got a plate that's got all my measurements on it because I personally find that easier. Um, but if you don't, you can measure it with a, um, a ruler and then put a magnet there and just butt everything up against the magnet. Okay, so I'm going to open out this seam and I'm going to use my little seam roller I got because, you know, it's fun to play with gadgets. Ooh. I actually saw one of these the other day. This one's from Timu. I uh, saw one the other day at Spotlight. It's $14. I was like, holy moly. So that's rolled it out a bit. And so now I'm going to go up to a four stitch length and I'm going to stitch either side of the line. And I'm making sure, this, this hand here is pushing to make sure that that seam is open as I'm sewing. Backstitch, out of habit. Switch to the other side. We're gonna go both sides of this. I personally think the rainbow thread gives it a little something extra. Especially on that black. See how fun that is? Just changes colour. Alright, let's put on the other side. So again, let's flip it like that. Go back to a two and a half. 
line it up, stitch, back stitch. Stitch, back stitch. Trim off those tails. And again, we're gonna flip it. We're gonna open it. You can push it with your finger. This is kind of fun to play with, not gonna lie. Uh, now, if you've got really, really thick vinyl, you can actually put some double-sided tape here and stick it down, if that's gonna make it easier for you. Up to a four, tails behind, stitch, back stitch, flatten it out. Flip the other side, stitch, back stitch. Trim the tails. And that looks awesome. You could also do all of these in different colours. If you wanted to get super creative, you could use up all your scraps and turn this into stripes like the lips. Um, I did briefly think about that, but I currently have no scraps. All right, so this is a lining. I'm using cotton canvas as the lining piece. Uh, so I'm not going to interface it because it's like sturdy enough. So that's the bottom, bottom. Zipper pocket, because I've drawn it on there so I can tell. We need these two. Okay, and so I'm going to use the lining as the back piece. I do need to interface this, and it's just occurred to me that I haven't. Uh, so before we get up and interface that, because sometimes I forget things, I am only human after all, we're going to grab one of our lower lining pieces and install the zipper pocket, because then I'm only getting out once to do ironing instead of up and down, up and down. So I'm going to find the center bottom which is there. And then I'm gonna fold this in half and the side that I've drawn on, I always fold it in half just to check. The side that's got the rectangle is the side you wanna find the center. And then we're going to line those two up. Now I've just done a Tory pocket. I also want my Tory pocket a lot higher. And to line that up, you can just Grab a ruler. Oh, I actually got that first time. That takes practice. Uh, the more you do it like this, the more you'll get it lined up first time. All right, so we're gonna manually put it into the corner and we're gonna stitch the two long lines. Spin it around and then again, we're gonna line it up with the other side of the stitching. So if you accidentally did one stitch further than the end little short line, just make sure you start there so they're going to be even. We care more about evenness than anything. The so same with this end, make sure that you get it lined up, um, even if you have to manually put that last stitch in. We also want to cut this jump stitch so it doesn't distort our ironing, because it can very easily. Trim off the tails and again with that back jump stitch. So now you should just have the two lines and hopefully no random things in there. So I'm just going to pinch it in half and do a little snip. Because you've got to remember it's folded over, it's twice as big as it looks. So I've got enough space now to put the scissors in and I'm just going to manually cut approximately the middle. And then I'm gonna triangle out the ends. Now I like to leave at least three quarters of an inch to a full inch for my little triangle. The smaller you make the triangle, the more difficult it is to turn it out and keep it in place. So I like a fairly decent sized triangle. So now I'm just gonna push this through and go and iron that down. And I'm also gonna put some Hefty, which is a Vylene 1050F, on the back of this to make it stiff. Right, this is now stiffer. So see how it's just a bit stiffer. We do still have to put foam on the back of everything. 
um, because foam is the best. But until then, we're just going to do this. So I'm going to again line this up, put some clips on it just to feel better. And you can grab the other side. I always sit it there and then flip it. I just want to make sure that I don't sew these on the wrong way. Um, also, you could turn this so it's the other way. It's just occurred to me. So if you wanted to, you could have it thicker at the top than the bottom and have the shape like in reverse and then you would just sew these on the same. It would just essentially be upside down. It would give another look to the same bag. Just a thought for you all. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. And then we're going to sew and we're going to back stitch. Trim it. Then we're going to do the other side. Stitch, back stitch. Oh, just ran out of bobbin thread. I did know that was coming, uh, which is why I have another one that I prepared earlier. So we're going to stitch this. Then I will have to pause the video again so that I can iron the foam onto the back. All right, tails behind, come back in. I'm gonna go back a little bit, stitch, and then I'm gonna lift up and stitch again because back stitching with a full bobbin never works out well for me. All right, we're gonna stitch, we're gonna back stitch. All right, up to the four stitch length. And then I'm going to grab my little seam roller because it's fun. I should actually put cool stickers on it. And then I'm just going to roll that seam open. And it's, it won't stay perfectly open, but what it's doing is it's creating a crease so it'll be easier to do in a minute. I really like this. It's super handy. Okay, so start with it open, needle down, stitch, back stitch. I do actually want to get some more rainbowy ones, but I want them to be like, I don't know, like teal and purple in a rainbow. I don't even know if it comes like that. I'm going to have to look into it. But you could do like a fire one where it's just red, orange, and yellow. It'd be so good. If anybody knows of anywhere, please let me know where I can buy them because I feel like I need it in my life. Not that I don't love the rainbow. For this, the actual full rainbow is perfect, but I'm just thinking, that sounds like it's got a loop. Oh, it does. See? The more you sew, the more in tune with your machine you'll become. Which I know is a weird sentence, but it is true. I can hear you when something's amiss. All right, stitch, back stitch. It's probably because of the back stitching earlier with a full bobbin. Back stitch. Turn. Just fold this over so it fits in your throat. If you've got a really small machine, instead roll it like this. It'll make it way easier, I promise. that's now the back right so we're gonna have the same fabric on the back as the lining because the main focus of this bag is this very cool thing and then it all just kind of ties into each other I had a whole vision when I was doing this all right so they will need vinyl and I will do that in a moment but until then let's grab the Tory pocket now if you want to you could put a little zipper overlay on this I'm just going to leave it as is and I'm going to use, I pulled it out earlier, yellow zipper tape with rainbow teeth because uh, it's like the whole vibe that's going on. I also need to pick hardware. My brain really wants to pick, I think I actually want to do gunmetal grey instead of rainbow hardware, except obviously for this zipper, but it's inside, doesn't really count. It has a whole feel to it. But I think a gunmetal zipper 
would look really cool instead of a rainbow one because it kind of ties in with the black of everything. Oh, I have no idea what that noise is. Something outside. It's not my dog. He just lays at the front door of my studio. He doesn't come in because there's enough room for him to like spread out and take over. I don't hate that. So that's what I'm going to do. And again, that won't be for everyone. Some people don't want to at all mix up their hardwareness and that's fine. I'm doing it because I don't want you to be scared to be able to. So maybe if I'll do it, I'll inspire you to do it too. Since that's the whole point of all of my videos, is basically to inspire you to do cool stuff. Try something new. I actually have a whole bunch of the decals coming. Decals, decals, whatever you call them. Um, I got a lot of horror ones because I have a plan. So I will keep you updated when they arrive. It will be a while. My mail doesn't get to me as quickly in Townsville as it did in Melbourne. And that's okay. So what I just did there was I stitched all the way around. And now that I'm getting back to the start, I'm going to make sure I go into that first hole. And then stitch two, back two. Funnily enough, that actually worked out to be the same colour. So I got the whole way around and ended up starting and finishing with green. And I started and finished with the same colour in the um, bobbin as well. That never happens, just so you know. Got our zipper in. See, it just, it looks good. So this should just fall down and line up down the bottom. So I'm going to fold this side over and we're going to stitch here. Now you can do any seam you like at the side. I'm currently doing 3 8 I usually do between a quarter and 3 8 depending on what I'm feeling. Sometimes a quarter is just too close to the edge and I don't want to do that. It just means that the pocket will be that tiny bit bigger or smaller. Anybody buying your bags possibly wouldn't notice the, the eighth of an inch difference on each side. Uh, which is fine. So that's now my pocket there. I'm not going to put any slip pockets or anything in this bag. I just want it like a big tote with just one little zipper pocket. That's personally what I like to carry. Um, I just feel like that'll work out what's best for me. Okay, so we've got, these are the two bottoms. These are the two top, no, that, not that one. I lied. This one's the top one. Alright, so you've cut everything on the fold. So these are the tops, and so before we join them, we want to make our zipper in the middle. So the zippers are the shorter pieces, and what do we got? So that's for the zippers, these are for the handles, and then we've got our base. So there's not actually that many pieces left. I might make my handles just to get them out of the way, and because I know my bobbin is long enough to not create drama. So I'm going to do yellow handles with a black stripe. So this time I've cut the stripe three quarters of an inch. I always cut it differently uh, just to keep myself on my toes. And because I like the look of different stuff. I don't just want to make one handle forever. I want to do fun stuff. Okay. So this is my three quarter inch tape. It is amazing. Um, I sell it on my website. Uh, so for those that are following along at home, I will still be doing, I will still be kind of doing the waterproof canvas. I will just be doing a pre-order instead of trying to constantly have it in stock. Because let's be honest, I could never keep up with all the colours that you guys wanted at any given time. And it always, like, I'd buy heaps of black and then you will want red. And then i get heaps of red and then you will want purple. So I've decided pre-ordering is the best way to do that. Um, so I will just do them every couple of months or so, whenever I feel like I need some more. Alright, so at the moment I'm just pinching it to the center and then pushing it down. So I pinch it with my right hand, push it down with my left, because I'm right handed and I find it this way is easier. You can do it the other way if you want to, where you pinch it with your left hand and push it with your right. You also want to push down and not swipe. We don't want to stretch our vinyl. Different vinyls will be different amounts of stretchy. 
If you're not getting the standard Pacifica, it might have more or less stretch. And then I'm just going to rub it on the edge of the table to really crease that in and to not give me drama. Right. Then this piece is going to go over the top. So I'm going to grab my skinnier tape. So this is three quarters of an inch, but I'm going to use my half inch tape just so it doesn't pop out the sides. Literally my only reasoning. But I want to be able to see this and I don't want to have random sticky residue on my handle so you finish making it and then like a section will get covered in dirt. We don't want that. So I always just use something that's a little bit smaller. Right. Normally I don't pull it all off but I figured today will be fine. So I'm just going to stick that in the middle like that. So it's mainly black on the top and then all yellow and then we're going to use a size 4 stitch length and we're going to sew the two long edges. Now if you want to you could put um, strap ends on this. It sounds like it's being naughty except it's not. I don't know why I'm not going faster. Mainly because I think the bobbin is giving me grief. And I don't like that. But it looks fine, so who knows. Oh, see, I love the rainbow effect. I'm going to check the bobbin. See? Because there's a loop. Can you see that? See that loop right there? It's kind of cool that I can now hear when it's a problem. Uh, but it doesn't always cause stitching problems. Not always. Depends on where the loop is, funnily enough. So, let's do the other side. Two stitches, back to the first one instead of back stitching. And then hopefully I won't get a loop. See, it sounds different. Sewing at full speed with problems in your bobbin will definitely cause issues why I stayed slow before. Trim off those tails. And like how good does that look? And then on the back it's got rainbow too. It's just rainbowy everywhere. Alright, let's do our second one. So you can stop and iron your interfacing on when uh, your foam interfacing. Oh it is interfacing. Whenever you want. Um, I am, I have seen, pretty sure it's Sophisticated Crafts, has this really cool, like, stick-on foam. It's a different type of foam. I think I found it, um, and I want to try it. Uh, and if it works out, I will give you guys, like, info on where to get it. Or if somebody in Australia is stocking it, I will let you know. Um, but I am going to do, I'm going to do some shopping later today and I want to get some of that foam just to see if it's going to be as awesome as I think, because then there's no ironing. It's just, you just stick it on, which means I don't have to get up. I also did want to make a matching wallet for this, uh, but I will have to go and buy more of the fabric because I'm out. All right, always put it in the bin, flip it over, and again, you can go left to right, right to left, whatever floats your boat. And we just want to, now I'm pushing, I'm not swiping, I'm basically tapping. And crawling along it with my fingers to make sure that everything sticks to where I want it to. Like that. So again, we're going to stitch, stitch, and we're off. And that sounds like it's got a loop again. Really? Yeah, it does. It's stitching fine, so I'm just not going to go fast. 
apparently today is not the day for back stitching. See, I can just hear it. Sometimes my sensitive hearing is a good thing, other times not so much. Two stitches, back to the first one. No back stitching required. And I can sew faster. Because we all know I like to sew fast. I don't, I just, I just do. Alright, cut off the tails at both ends. And that's the handles done. Now you can have strap connectors or you can just rivet these straight to the bag. If you are going to rivet them straight on, you do need to put the foam interfacing on first. So now that they're sewn and fabulous, like they look good from both directions. You could even have them so that the yellow sticks up and then the black's like where your hands go because it's less likely to get dirty. Depending on who, like, who it's for and stuff. You could actually have it the other way. So let me show you what I mean. Oh, my brain's always got too many ideas. Right, so here's the bag. So normally what I do is I put it on this way, like this, and it connects just inside here. So it would look like that, but we could do it this way. So the yellow's facing up and then the black's like the subtle underneath part. And I think we're gonna do that today because that looks really cool. And it's something different. You guys have seen me make this before. I think my machine was still gray, but I have made this before, so I like to do different things. So I think we're gonna end up doing that because it's gonna look cool. All right. I'm just doing a black zipper. So we're gonna flip all of these over. Now these have an up and a down side. All right, so we're gonna do this because they're both facing the right way. Although it is the lining, so it is slightly less important, but it's good to be in a good habit. Then I'm going to put double-sided tape on the end, on the same end of all of them. Now, if your exterior is directional, you do need to think about which end you're sticking to. Mine is not, it is black vinyl, so it'll be fine. No matter which way I pick. This is a uh, rippable tape. I say terrible, but it sounds like terrible and it's not terrible, it's absolutely amazing. But to get precision, and I'm still just not used to tearing it, I do um, cut it with scissors, which will make them blunter quicker, but what do you do? They were like $2. All right, so I'm going to fold this down like so. And then I'm just going to copy that. I'm using the, what's it called, tape measure on my table to make sure that they are all going to be the same. That is important. We want them the same. Helps for lining things up in like two more minutes. Now sometimes on fabric, your tape won't want to stick. It's just being stubborn. Give it a minute and try and pull from somewhere different. It will come off, I promise. All right. Fold it, stick it. And peel. Line it up again, fold over that end, and then just push. And because it's double-sided tape and it's awesome, it will just stick. So now I've got it at the end of all of them. We need more of our tape. So, as a rule, you want to make sure it's longer, and then you just need a tail. So you can have a big tail or a little tail. I'm going to cut it here. Uh, the pattern always tells you how much you need, but if you don't want to get up or if you get the rough gist, like if you're watching my video, I don't give out measurements. So that's how you can just kind of guesstimate. 
and it all works out fine in the end I promise never had an issue doing it that way and I do it a lot all right so we're gonna crack the zip just like I don't know two or three inches and then we're gonna fold that down at a right angle hold it and then stitch it now I have seen people lately have been stapling it if that's your jam you go right ahead won't hurt anyone to staple it just make sure you um, also tack it or make sure that the staple can either be removed and is definitely not in the seam part where you're going to sew that is the single most important part of that sentence you don't want to accidentally sew over your staple so then we're just going to fold the other side to match and it's just a couple of back and forth stitches there's nothing major or secret to this you just make sure it's folded over and do like five or six stitches and then go back and forth just to make sure they're locked in it's not even forever anyway now you can separate your zip and i know this freaks a lot of people out i know but i promise it's going to be okay now if you've got a pattern if you've got a pretty pattern put it together like this and then you want to just lay your zipper where the pattern's going to be. So here and here to make sure that this is at the right end. Okay, so you're just going to line it the way it needs to be. That's where you want it. And then we're going to flip it so right sides are facing. I know this might seem crazy, but that's how you line up your pretty pattern if you've got one. And if you don't, well, you don't really need to do that. So I'm going to start at the not folded edge and I'm just going to clip my way down. Now this is one of those things I will clip in place because it likes to be tricky and move and I don't like that. Then we're going to grab one of these and we're going to put it right sides down and you want to first line up the folded end. It's very important that they line up well. Uh, which I have not done there. Hold that thought. There, that's better. And then you can move back towards the other end. Because if for whatever reason, when you are folding them and making them the same size, if they're not the same size, this is the moment you can fix it at this end. So that's one. This one we wanted here. So we're going to flip that. And then clip down. Grab enough clips. And it doesn't matter if you need a lot or a little. And then again, we're going to put these right sides together, make a zipper sandwich, and start at the folded end and line the folded end up. And then you can clip backwards. like whoops like so two and a half joining stitch length if you're on a domestic or a, an electronic computerized machine most of the time when you turn it on it'll be between 2.4 and 2.6 and i've just realized that that's got a bump in it and we don't want that okay so the non-folded edge we're going to stitch across and I'm just going to use a quarter inch. I just back stitch so let's hope that this doesn't give me grief. Then we're going to pivot, needle down, pivot and stitch next to the zip tape. And then when we get to the end of here you want to stitch all the way to the end but not off the fabric and then back stitch then I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit and you've got options here you can either stitch from the opposite direction with this side up or we can flip it over so vinyl is right size up now and then stitch it exactly the same way as before whatever you feel more comfortable with Normally I do it opposite, so we're going to do something different today. The downside to this is I put all my clips on upside down. It's not the end of the world, but it is a moment. 
So again, we don't want to come off the fabric and then back stitch. Now you can separate the two with the tails and clip them all the way off so that they're not hanging out later. It's always more annoying to remove those. Pair of scissors. This little corner where all the bulk is, we want to snip it out. I also really want to get these scissors fixed today. I really do. They're driving me out the wall. All right, so I'm just going to cut out the corners and just that bit. Nowhere else. Put all of that into the bin. See that tail? Get rid of it. Turn it through. Pull out your zipper like that. Now the first place I always like to stitch is this open edge to make sure that they line up. So what we can do, start lining it up there. I'm going to go to a four because I want this to be decorative anyway. You also won't see these stitches later. So this is just to make sure that the lining and the exterior are the same width. That's how we cut them. And they are very likely to try and misbehave. Once you've sewn that, we can come and top stitch around the part you will see. And I'm using this hand to kind of pull at the zipper teeth to make sure that nothing is being folded over while I stitch. We get to the end here. We're going to needle down, pivot, and then close that little small end, back stitch, and pull it out. And so now it is top stitched all the way around. It's held close. It's going to make it easier for installation. Let's do the same to this one. So again, poke it out, line up that edge, pop it under the machine. Now you can clip this. I have clipped it in other videos, but I'm trying to show some different stuff, different techniques you can use. If you've mastered all the other ones I've showed you. So again, we want to line it all up. And then we're going to top stitch. So this time it will be from the bottom to the top. It doesn't matter. Back stitch. Trim off the tails and that's now our two bits so I'm going to find the center of the fabric part ignore the tail it's currently irrelevant for the center and then the center of this one fold it over find the center like that and then we're going to grab our bottom linings so we need the center There. We also need centre top and bottom of this one too for when we're putting in our base. So I may as well just find it all now. It does make it easier than trying to do it later. Okay, so we always start with the one that's already got the zip in it because I always like the zips to close in the same direction. So we're going to grab the piece that closes to the left to copy this one. There's the center, line it up in the center and clip it on, making sure that the edges line up like that and like that. So there's one, it looks really long. Why do I feel like that's too long? could definitely be wrong about that. Right. Then we need our top pieces like this. 
flip it down. Now you can do this part out of vinyl if you want to. Um, I just chose to do it in fabric because I have a whole vibe going. I really like this fabric. It matches. If you look hard enough on the internet, you can find a decal to match any fabric you have. So if you want to do one of these, you just got to take a really good look. All right. Again, that one right sides down. Clip it all together. Add it in. I never clip three things at once. I always find it more difficult. It's not my jam. All right, two and a half stitch length. And then we're gonna stitch. So we're gonna stitch, back stitch. And I'm just removing the clips as I go. Back stitch at the end. Now we can take the next piece and just add it straight under. Continue on. Chain sewing. It's a wonderful thing. Do a little bit and then cut off the first one so it's not in the way. Backstitch. Trim it off. Trim off the tail at the start of this one. Less tails you cut off during the process, the less you have to deal with at the end. Now, some people, and I'm going to do it, top stitch this down. So I'm going to make all of this seam go down and I'm going to stitch underneath the panel. So you won't really see it, but it's going to hold that down instead of up. Do the same to the other piece. We want to hold that in the down position so we just stitch under the zipper panel. And I'm just stitching it an eighth of an inch to make sure it's fabulous. Separate them, trim the tails from the start. It's starting to look good. Hey, it's got like a vibe going. All right. Take this tail, fold it back on itself, clip it out of the way on both pieces. It is very likely to try and get in your way, so it is always easier to clip it now rather than accidentally stitch it. So now we're going to put these two pieces together. The first thing we want to do is line up that side seam, especially if you've done vinyl to fabric it'll be super noticeable if that isn't lined up really well so joining stitch length of two and a half and off we go stitch back stitch finally i can back stitch without my machine giving me grief which is nice it just doesn't like doing it with a full bobbin don't know its reasoning it's just stubborn like that i guess Trim that. We're going to repeat that with the other side. So again, we want to line up that seam. We care more about that seam than any other bit at the moment. And I like to put one clip each side so that it behaves itself. And then I'm going to grab the bottom and line it up and off we go. And backstitch at the end. Trim off those tails, and you now have the startings of a bag. We're going to grab our base here. We're going to fold it in half, even though it just was, in case yours wasn't. Find the center of all four sides. It's going to be the easiest way to install this, I promise. One, two, three, four. 
Now, this is always something I do and I'm going to explain it. Zipper pocket is now in front of me. So when I'm going to have the, the fancy panel here, this is how we're going to design the bag. Fancy panel here. Then you can open the zipper pocket so it's closing to the left, opening to the right. Which means this edge here where the zipper pocket is, is where I want to put the top of the print of your base piece. So that your when you look into the bag, from holding it from the front, you look in, this is where it's all going to match up. This does, You don't have to do this, but this is just one of those little details. If you've got a directional print, try and make sure that it's sitting in there the right way. I'm also going to turn all of my clips around to face the lining piece. Because I can and because I'm meant to. And we're going to start sewing half an inch in from that corner. Now, if you can't visualize that, literally grab a ruler and a pen and draw it on. I will show you how. I don't need this. I can eyeball it very well. But if you can't eyeball it, just draw a little kind of start-stop line. You can even draw a start-stop square in the corner. We won't be cornering. We won't be blocking them, but that'll do the other side as well. You can just do a little start stop corner rather than having to draw a whole line because you can use this as your guide for your half inch seam allowance but this will just show me where to start like that and then we can stitch all the way along oopsies i mean you can draw the whole line uh, and then it's like a guideline for the sewing part but this way, you don't have to draw the whole line. You just draw little corners. It's like the next evolutionary step. So you draw the whole line for beginners, the corners for intermediates, and then you just draw nothing when you get more advanced. So that's just fun. I'm also going to take my dodgy scissors and I'm going to cut right up to... No, we're just going to use the snips. I know it makes them blunt quicker, but... My scissors have issues and I can't be bothered dealing with it right now. So I've just done a little snip. See that? So there's the line. I've just kind of done it on a bit of an angle. Done that on both ends. Then we're going to do, we're going to match up the other side, but I'm actually going to leave the bottom open so that I can turn the bag through here rather than the little pocket. This will be easier. You have to trust me on this. So I'm just going to come in here, stitch, back stitch, and I'm just going to do like a little bit. What is that? Two inches? Pretty much on the money. Two inches. Just a little bit. Whatever you feel comfortable with. The bigger the hole you leave, the easiest the bag is to turn. You've just got to not leave it all the way to the corner because we still do still have to sew this shut. And we don't want to make it totally impossible for ourselves to do so. Okay, so I'm just doing a little bit. And that has now left me this whole gap to turn the bag through. I could have done maybe just one inch and left a little bit more. And I'm still going to do those little snips that I did earlier. Don't snip through your stitches though. So then I'm going to grab this, pull this down. And that side seam should line up with the middle point that we made earlier. So there to there. And then we're just going to snip from our little box to the other side. Like so. And this is why we draw those little boxes in the corner. Because it just shows you your start-stop points. You don't need to know your seam allowance because the plate tells you. And because we snip those corners, it is easier to do this. Stitch, back stitch, across we go. Back stitch when we get to the end. Trim your tails. And then you can turn your lining through. That's a pretty lining piece. Done. Now I need to stop and iron my 
foam interfacing onto this to make it firm and glorious, and then I'll be back. Right, so our interfacing is now, the foam interfacing is now on the back of these, and I've also got my base here with the base stabilizer interfaced on. So let's put our feet in. So we'll need a pen and a ruler. Now different people put their feet in different spots. You can do whatever floats your boat. I am not the boss of you. Different people have different reasonings for their feet. Um, I'm going to put mine here, I guess. And then I'm gonna put a fifth one. I don't always put a fifth one, um, but the way I work out the fifth one is I just do diagonally from my four points and then where it intersects that's where the middle is you can also work out all the middle and stuff I just find that way a bit quicker for me personally and before I go putting any feet in I'm also going to find all the center points because we're going to attach this base the same as the lining just without leaving a gap so I need the center of all four points and it's always easy to do without hardware on. It's actually easy to do without even the base piece, um, but 9 out of 10 times I forget to find the centers before I iron my stabilizer on. It's my magical ability that apparently I have. So we're going to grab these. At this stage I still don't have my special table I want for these. I promise I will try and convince my husband to be recorded while he makes it for me and then I'll explain what he's doing. Uh, there, there, and there. So smaller bags probably only need four feet. This is a longer, wider bag, and I feel like it would most likely dip in the middle, so we're going to put five. I also used to put my logo there, so that's another reason why I never did that. But again, whatever makes you happy. It's your bag to do with as you will. So I'm just pushing all of the bases through. Flip it over. Grab my dome bag feet. I love these. These are my favorite feet. I don't know why, I just love them. I don't even bother with other feet anymore. You can get screw in ones if you don't have a cam press. But again, I just love these. This is just a normal 10 mil rivet die. There's nothing magical about it. Done. Feet are in. Because uh, it's much harder to join them later. So it's always easier to do it now. Uh, and also before we go joining all of our exterior together, I'm actually gonna put strap-ins on my straps to make them fabulous looking. And again, this is just one of those added extras. You don't have to do this, but I do think it elevates the bag. They look awesome, and I have a crap ton of them, so I may as well use them up. Now, the way you put these on will be dependent on which... Stop it. That one screw is trying to run away. So I have decided to put the yellow facing out, right? So it's going to be on the yellow with the cool black on the inside just for something different. Again, you don't have to do it this way. I am not the boss of you. But I'm going to position it on the end. Grab my electric screwdriver. This is an eBay job. It was about $30. Um, Sandra from the Ghana Sewing Room has an even cooler one. It has a light in it. I am definitely a little bit jealous of the light one because I didn't know that existed. And then we're just going to screw it in. And I'm holding it all in place so it behaves itself and doesn't move there's nothing worse and it goes as you can see I have recently uh, put in new batteries so now I've got a nice end it's good when it's got good batteries zooms through lovely so again you want to make sure it's really lined up well And I definitely do not regret black hardware with this, or gunmetal, whatever you wish to call it. Alright, this has stopped being magnetic, so I'm just going to rub it on my snippity snip magnet. And 
Oh! It's a quick fix, but it works. One. I just really like how this is going to look. It's going to have fun and sophistication all going on at the same time. So that's those two. Grab another packet. Do it again. And again and again and again. Like I said, I have a lot of these left over from when I was selling hardware. The main reason I've stopped selling hardware, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know, um, I want to spend more time writing patterns. So as of hopefully this week, in a perfect world, as of this week, I want to be able to start writing patterns. I have so many in mind and I just never seem to have enough time because all I was doing was packing orders. So I'm hoping that by cancelling out the order packing, I can write all of the cool designs that are in my head. Um, but I'm start this is the first week that I don't have to unpack boxes. So I'm starting with a cool bag from... Because I wanted to use something from my cool Timu haul video. I think I've paired it wonderfully. Um, but again, that's just my opinion. Different people like different stuff. So this bag is obviously not for everybody. And I can understand and respect that. We don't all have the same taste in things. So I'm just noticing that this one little thread is kind of wrecking my vibe. So I'm just going to pull it out. Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't really want to come out. Chop it off. Whatever's going. Maybe just even that up a little bit might help my cause too. So on she goes. And so again, we're making the solid side without the holes for the thing on the yellow side. Now the pattern piece actually has positioning things, so I'm going to grab that in a minute too. Now obviously this is not going to go into the top seam. I think that's what the bag has. I don't remember. I, f I definitely use patterns as more of a guide than a rule, uh, but I'm going to rivet these under the front of the bag. Just if you couldn't tell yet or you missed it at the front, you weren't paying close attention to what the bag looked like. But it's totally okay. I get it. So what we want to do, is theoretically, somewhere here I have the pattern piece, because I know I do. Here we go. Right, so it tells me on here how far apart to put it from the centre. So that's nice. That's really what I needed to know. So we're going to fold it in half and find the centre. You guys sick of me saying that yet? Right. Centre. Love it. Ruler. Love that too. So. There. And. No, that's wrong. There. That is where this is going to go. Line that up with the edge there. And then I just need to work out how many rivets. One, two, three. Three's cutting a bit of close. Maybe I'll just do two. Yeah. For proper placement, we can grab this. Now I've got two options. I can do one each side. The problem with this one is it's going to literally wreck all my stitches. Um, so you can see that that's going to go, like the holes go straight through the stitching. So we are just going to do the one. And we want to make sure that we're not too close to the hardware. So I'm going to butt this all the way down to it. And then I'm going to use a pen to mark which holes I want. So I definitely don't want the first hole. I think I'm going to go the second hole. If the pen wants to work, which apparently it doesn't. That's okay. I have a lot of other pens here. Oh, come on. And that's why paper patterns never last in my sewing room. Because I scribble on them. And then... Okay, so let's... There. 
like that. So maybe just, I'm just trying to figure out how many I want and how far apart I want them. So if I do three, I can go one, two, three. And that still gives me plenty of room actually up the top here. So we're actually are gonna do three, right in the center. You could also do this with an erasable pen if you're not confident about scribbling on it. And that's okay too. I'm just going for it. Sometimes if you fake your confidence, at the end it'll turn out fine. I can do it, whether it's tricky or not, but we just, I'm trying to make it so it's not too tricky for others. All right, so these are all the holes I'm going to punch. So I'm actually gonna punch all the holes in these and then I'll do the ones in the bag because it's gonna be easier to line it up in a minute. So, hole punch. This is gonna use a lot more rivets than if you just did two. You could also sew it on if you wanted to. Um, I mean, there's a lot of options you could do. You could have done it um, with like a, what's it called? A buckle. Buckle would have been cute. Maybe I'll do one of them in the near future. Because buckles are cute. I really hope my head's not in the way. And if it is, I apologize. But I need to be able to see where I'm punching my holes. Okay. I'm not going to put that too far away because we're going to need it. And I'm going to need something that I can see on black. So I'm going to use my white, um, what's it called? Lumicolor Permanent Waterproof Fancy Pencil. Pretty much what it is. All right. I'm gonna make this easier for myself. So we're gonna put this here like so. Line it up. So I'm doing mine a little bit longer than the original pattern because it's just easier for me. Not gonna lie, it's just easier. Now, this is probably not actually gonna go in there. So because of that, instead, I'm going to grab my fabulous sewing awl. I love this one. It is a gift and it is my favorite. It's like a pen one. I don't know, it just makes me really happy to play with it. So we're gonna go here. And then I'm just going to stab this in. And hopefully we can see the holes. Oh, you won't be able to see them on camera, but I can see them in front of me. And that's what matters. So there's a hole. There's a hole. And there's a hole. And by punching them separately, I think it's just going to be easier. Honestly, not that one, this one. This one are my rivets. So I'm going to, from the right side, push one, two, and three like that. And then we're just going to flip this and bring them through the holes that we just punched because everything should line up schmicko. And then we can just put the caps on the back. And I'm gonna do one strap at a time. And that may seem potentially like a waste of time. I don't even care. I feel like this is the best way for me to get this on here well. So we're going to squish one, two, and three. And that's one strap now on, and that looks awesome. It's got a bit of kind of bold punkness to it, I guess. This whole bag is a vibe, and I am here for it. I also can't believe that sentence just came out of my mouth, but whatever. So here, we line that up. Over, down, perfect. And then we're just gonna stab. You can also lift it up if you need to stab more. And, whoop, and remove. 
remembering that that is now stuck on there so you can't just pull it out of the way. I know it's looking messy. Normally I would go and do this on a different table. Um, we're just not because we're recording. musical thing. So I'm going to hold this, make sure there's no hole, bring it around, and then push these through. Whoops, I missed. That's okay. And then we're going to flip it over, push it through the holes like so. Snap one. Two and three. Fun fact, if you run out of um, like either, either end of these and you're nearly finished a bag, just turn them so that the, you can use like a different color one, just turn it so it's inside the bag. Nobody will ever know, except you. And eventually you'll forget that you did that. And then you've still got enough to complete your bag. See, how fun is that strap? So it's yellow from here and then like sneaky on the inside. All right, I am going to hit pause while I do the other side and then we can continue. All right, the other one is on. We now have handles. So we're gonna put these right sides together, grab a bunch of clips and clip them together. Now, if you did stripes like I randomly suggested earlier, uh, you want to basically put a clip each side of the stripe to make sure it's lined up. Just because it'll look better. Trust me on that. Uh, and because this is quite a bulky seam, I'm going to put a lot of clips. I also could have just cut the uh, interfacing smaller so it's not in the seam. But I didn't. So here we go. So I'm going to stitch. Take that off. Back stitch. And backstitch. And I just ran out of bobbin thread. That's alright. I have another one. That first one was very empty. Uh, and I planned for this. Love it when I plan for things and it works out. <clears throat> I also do think I really want to do a matching wallet. What would be really cool is if I had a smaller version of the decal to iron onto the front of a wallet. That would look amazing. But I don't have one. Oops. Trim off the tails, throw them both in the bin, not just the one. I'm trying to keep my floors somewhat clean. Although if you look at the rest of my room, it is actually still quite trashed. Uh, my husband was trying to build me a very cool shelf for my giant light box. If you're in my Facebook, you have seen it. It is massive. It's gonna live on a shelf up out of the way because a shelf is easier than a pulley system. I did really like the pulley system you guys all suggested. However, my husband just kind of stared at me like I was crazy. He's like, no, we'll do a shelf, which is fine. Um, but he, while he was drilling something, it slipped off whatever he was trying to drill and went through his finger. Uh, so he went to the doctors this morning and they had to pull out two bits of metal from in his finger. So. I don't know when my shelf will actually end up happening. I'm gonna wait till these fingers better first. Okay, trim off that. Yoink. Okay, so now we've got the front and the back. Now, if you wanted to make an easier bag, you could actually just stitch the bottom and have like a really skinny tote. But also make a really cool other style bag. Just another random thought. In the meantime, we're going to grab this. We also need to find the bottom center of this because as usual, I haven't found it yet. Pinch, snip, other side. So you put the two side seams together and just lead out and that's where the center is. This one doesn't have a top and a bottom, so it doesn't matter which one you stick it on, but I'm gonna line up that center with right sides together and then pin my way out. 
Now, you can see I'm using a lot more pins than I did with linings because the foam sometimes likes to fight me. I don't like it when it tells me what to do, but sometimes it tries anyway. So the more pins I've got, the more control I have over the whole situation. So, again, if you want to, you can draw those little corner things in I talked about earlier with a ruler to know your start and stop point. Very real option for you if you want. Also keep in mind that this is um, stiffer than your lining, so don't be up against the wall with your machine. I'm currently in the middle of my room because that's what works for me. Um, and I've got a bit of a gap here, you can see. I probably should have a little bit more, to be totally honest. All right, other side. Come, join, clip, clip. So we always work outwards from the center because I promise it's just easier. All right, and we're gonna put even more clips on this side than the other one. Because the other side's stitched, it's now gonna try and fight to move the way it wants to. And I really don't want that. So I'm putting a lot more clips on this side because now it's already clipped here, it's gonna try and move even further. Okay. And my hand just keep getting caught on the edge of my table. It's fine. So on, clip, back, off we go. Surprised the loop hasn't happened underneath yet. Oops. Alright, let's trim off some of these tails that I have going on here, of which there are many. And then we're going to do that same thing where we just clip on an angle towards the stitching, up to it but not through it. Oh, that rhymes. I like that. Up to it but not through it pretty accurate. So then, if you put your fingers, the easiest way to get this to go flat for you, put your fingers in and pull it out firm and then I'm also going to open that out so it's less bulky and clip each side so that that center point is in line with the seam. And then we're just going to add extra clips so it doesn't move because it's going to try, I promise you. Uh, so I've actually just put five clips on that tiny little seam to make sure it doesn't move. And then we're going to do the same to the other end. So again, open out the seam. If you want to cut some of that away, you can. Do, 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 do. Other way. Like that. Now it should be like a cube. I'm going to sew it this side up because that's the way I put the clips. So we basically just start at the end of the other stitching. Stitch forward, backwards. Sewing slower because everything's trying to be more tricky right now. Yoink! Trim. Pull that off, put the clips away. Let's do the other side. So again, I'm just kind of squishing it, sewing forward and back. I mean, you can sew faster if you're feeling confident. That's okay. Sometimes it's nice to feel confident on a little straight bit. Totally understandable. Me and my dodgy scissors. I'm calling them that because they are misbehaving and I need to take them to a uh, scissors doctor. I'm pretty sure there's one in town actually. And I'm just chopping off the excess in those corners so it's going to sit nicer. Uh, you just hack it off. I'm not even being neat about it. Cut all that off if you really want. Push it off into the bin. I've got the bin positioned directly at the end of this table. So I can literally just sweep stuff off into it. Because it makes me happy too. All right, potentially tricky bit. We're gonna tuck our handles in. 
and it might try and fight you a little bit on this. Then, so this is the front, and I want, I want the zipper over here, this side. So, I also want this on the back. So we're gonna put it in this way, so that the zipper closure is over on this side. We also wanna push that down. And the first thing I'm gonna do is line up those side seams. I'm gonna open that one out so it's flatter. And then I'm just going to clip it either side there. And then I'm gonna to come to this side and do the same. Because they should all line up and be fabulous. Okay, then we're gonna make sure that our zipper section points down so it's out of the way and we're gonna push our handles down so they are also out of the way. We essentially just want everything out of the way. And I'm going to make my clips face the lining. I would actually love to top stitch this with my cylinder arm, um, but the guy's gonna come sometime later today, hopefully, and fix it. I finally figured out all this time why it hasn't been working. One of the bars in it is twisted and I'm not even gonna to attempt to fix that. He also told me it's very easy to mess it up and make it worse. So I don't really feel the need to touch it. But instead of me having to try and lift that thing and take it to him, he's gonna come here. So that's wonderful for me. I've pulled something too tight somewhere and there's like an extra bit. But now that I've just gone backwards from there, it all fits fine. So let's do the other side. Again, we're gonna make sure that this zipper part points down so that it is out of the way of what I'm trying to do. And you can see I'm using a lot of clips. I don't want things to move at all in any way, shape or form. We can go from edge to center, center to edge. You can do it randomly. There is no right and wrong. It is just on that we are doing. Togetherness, line up those edges. That's another reason we're using so many clips. Um, there is a lot of fabric towards the lining and I don't want it to be pulling while I'm trying to sew it. That's like a whole bunch of clips and I do not regret doing so. But we are nearly finished. So I'm just gonna start anywhere that I feel comfortable. I'm just gonna peel back this top. I'm also gonna tuck my arm in so I don't wreck my shoulder. We don't need that going on. And I'm gonna stitch from here. So I'm gonna stitch and back stitch. Then as you get closer to where the um, handles are, you might find it's not so much tricky, but slightly awkward. That is because we have riveted them on and they're being brewed. All right, we're on the other side, so I'm gonna just keep bringing this bag around because we are essentially sewing a big loop. as we go. Again, keep pushing down that zipper because it's again being a bit rude. Round and round and round we go. It's not a where we stop nobody knows moment because we know where we're stopping. We're stopping where we started. because it makes me happy and back stitch when we get back to the start now if you're preserving your rainbow thread because you don't have much you probably didn't need to do the construction part in rainbow just a random thought that I've just had now through this hole we're gonna go and we're gonna grab a corner and we're gonna push it in and always make it a talking puppet always it means you've got a decent grip on it 
and it will be easier to turn. I definitely don't regret doing the yellow. I think this looks amazing with the yellow. Yellow is like a bold, happy colour. And the pink that I had didn't match properly. It was the wrong shade. It was actually too dark and it looks silly. So we're not going to do a silly shade. That would be silly. Now I'm actually going to leave the bag inside out. As crazy as this. Oh, I'm going to push it out a little bit. But we're going to turn it back to inside out. Once we've stitched the hole in the lining clothes. So I've put my hand into the zipper pocket. And I'm going to grab both sides of this. And just pull that little bit out of the zipper pocket. And then I'm going to stitch it together. Now you can just start from where you like left off line them up they are the same size so if you're more advanced you can definitely just hold it together and sew the other option is is you can put clips on it but it's also totally acceptable i just don't need to and i've showed you before how to put the clips on right and then you can tuck that back in i'm going to grab this and i'm going to do what i always do put my fingers at the seams pull tight pinch underneath Take my finger, fold that top under, and then pinch again, and then stitch that shut, preferably without that. Nope, that just come unthreaded. Did it? Or maybe it didn't. No, we're okay. I just thought it did. Tricky, tricky. Hold the handle out of my way. Now if you get strap connectors, obviously you have to put the handles on at the end so that they're not in your way like they are for me right now. Size 4 stitch length because that is what I have used today for all my fanciness. And I'm going to have the bag inside out. Normally I just do this the other way but again I'm all about doing different stuff today. Tuck the zipper pocket in. Zip. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch all the way around the edge. But first, I want my squishy pliers. I know that's not what they're called, but I call them squishy pliers. At that side seam, we are going to squish. I always use two hands to get a really good squish. Uh, and then if you want to, you can add clips. We are going to roll the seam all the way on the edge. And if you need to squish all the way around the edge, you go right ahead and do so. I'm going to squish anywhere there's a seam, just to make sure that I get nice, pretty, even stitches. Probably wasn't totally necessary, but I am doing it anyway. Nothing you can say is going to change my mind. I'm also going to put a heap of clips on this just so it holds the seam where it needs to be so that I can get a good clean sew around. And I will show you this closer in a second. So I've just squished this seam. All right, and I'm gonna put lots and lots of clips so that the fabric and the vinyl are right at the edge where they're meant to be so that I don't get a wonky top. It's probably the best way to look at that. All right, so again, seam, vinyl pliers. Um, if you have to invest in one thing this year, these are it, or snips, but snips are like three bucks. It's not really an investment for that. These are, I don't know how much they are now, probably between $30 and with the increase of prices of everything. Um, but especially, even if you're a hobbyist, especially if you're on a hobbyist, because you're most likely on a domestic machine, they will be the best investment for you. No, I am not paid to say that. I think I got mine on eBay. They're probably on Timu if we have a look. They're probably on AliExpress if you prefer there. I'm also going to tuck that handle in just so it's out of my way. I'm also really happy with the fact that I did the handles inside out. Because it's not something we normally do. And I always love to have different ideas. And like the other day, I did a live and I was talking about I want boxes. And someone said to use pizza boxes. Not in a million years did my brain come up with that. 
It's just my brain didn't even consider pizza boxes as an option, but it is perfect and I'm gonna order some. Gonna be a thing. All right, another scene, last scene to squish. Worth it, I promise it's worth doing. Even though this machine could probably sew through it without squishing, it just makes it more uniformly even, I suppose is the word I'm after. Words, phrase, sentence. So where I didn't put clips is where I'm gonna start. I am not going to backstitch. I am going to make I've got sure that I've got some nice long tails. Look at that. Then I'm gonna pop it underneath because we're gonna tie it off later. Now if you're new to the sewing and the top stitching, I do highly recommend doing a full quarter inch. I am gonna do an eighth of an inch because, well, I've been at this a while. But it's not that much of a difference between the quarter inch and the eighth of an inch. It's still, they still both look nice. And I have been known to, when the bag's gonna be tricky, just do the quarter inch seam. And I do not regret doing it when I do. You could do two lines if you wanted to feel fancy. Needle down, readjust the bag. Also, actually, while I'm here, I'm gonna pull on this thread to get the loop out, and then I'm gonna tie off those first threads. You don't wanna do it when you're already there. It makes it super awkward. I like to do it when I'm like opposite or just far away from it. it. Doesn't have to be perfectly opposite, but just far away from that problem. Trim, stitch. That sew all now just permanently lives here. I'm okay with it. I'm gonna pull down the handle. I don't wanna stitch the handle down. You could, if that's the look you're going for, you could actually stitch it into this seam. Wouldn't kill anything, it just would make it look a bit different. But if instead of rivets you did stitching, you could just add part of the stitching into this final bit. All right, I have just gone back to the start. I'm gonna give myself some nice tails. And again, so I'm gonna pull on this and it creates this little loop here. And then I'm gonna grab this and put it in the loop and just pull. So it comes to the lining side. Doesn't matter which way you did this from, we want it to come to the lining side so that we don't see it. Ah. I like to do three knots. Three knots makes me comfortably happy. Uh, two is not enough, four is too many. In my opinion, thread zapper. Uh, there will be a proper video on this later, but I do love this, it's fantastic. I love all my thread zappers. And now we can turn the bag to the outside. I'm literally making a fist so that I don't hurt my fingers. I don't feel like being in any form of pain. Ugh. And I can see here that I need to go and do a little bit of an iron onto this because it's moved from all my ridiculous turning. So I'm going to get this base out. So a way to avoid that problem is to iron the decal on now once the bag's finished. Because then we don't have to turn it through. Um, it'll be right, I'll fix that in a minute. So all that's really left is our zipper. So I'm going to take the clips off. I've got my zipper here and I've got a zipper pull, which means I'll need my fantastic thing here. So I'm going to pull both of these together. Grab my zipper. Now I put it, everybody puts it on differently. You can do it however you want. I might even do a close up video of how I do this if I haven't already got one. On, even, happy. The more you practice doing it without a zipper jig, the better you become, I promise. Repetition is key. I used to really suck at zippers. Like really suck. Like it would take me five minutes to get it on and that's not even exaggerating. 
literally five minutes. It was like my most hated thing that I had to do. But the more you practice, the better you get. So I'm going to just fold this over and then over again. So it's like a point and then just shove that end on. And even though this is rainbow, I still think the black hardware or gunmetal is going and matching quite lovely. But that's just me. You could have done rainbow if you wanted to. Or you could have done gunmetal zipper. Could have done black zipper. That is the beauty of making your own bag. Creative design is limitless. Zippers always take this that extra few twists. You just want to feel the back of the zipper and there's, you just don't want the little screw sticking up. So you need it flush or in further. It's an either or. The bag's done. Now I think that looks absolutely epic. And then the back's fun too, right? The back's still fun. We've got bag feet. What we don't have is a tag. I decided not to put on a tag. I could probably install one on the back, actually. I might do that a bit later. I am just going to go and give that a little bit of an iron with a cloth over it. But all in all, I think that has come out so cute. The zipper goes all the way across, so we're happy. The handles look good. The three uh, rivets will also make it quite strong. And then if you want to, not everybody likes this hanging over the edge, you could tuck it in like that. And you know what else would look really cool with this? I'm just thinking about this now and I might get up and do one. A tassel with black vinyl and spray paint the back yellow um, or put yellow HTV and then have it hanging from the zipper. There is a very good chance I'm gonna go and do this in a minute. Uh, but that is your everyday tote. I know I've done one in the past, but it's just an updated version, I guess. All right, well, thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.